What if I told you that babies that are born too early have a higher chance for survival if the mother smoked during pregnancy? Would you believe me? The thing is, an artificial intelligence told us so. So, what should we do? Should we recommend pregnant women start smoking? Or should we ask what got this AI confused? Now, the trick is, smoking during pregnancy can be a reason for babies to be born too early, but it's not the most serious one. This means that if a baby is born too early because the mother smoked, its chances for survival are higher than if it was born too early for a different reason. AI is lazy. It looks for the most obvious correlations and goes with those. Now, in this case, it was easy for us to spot that something was fishy. But sometimes, we want AI to figure out stuff for us. Three years ago, I was very busy trying to tell elementary particles apart. My PhD was about particles we haven't seen and how to find them. The last particle we found was the Higgs boson back in 2012. Now, that was definitely the event of the year for some of us, but it has been quiet on the new particles end since that. Now, I was ready for some new particles, and I was especially interested in those that are difficult to tell apart, because I like to make things hard for myself. Two of these difficult guys would have so similar distributions inside a particle detector that it would look like you've just drawn the same distribution twice. So, the first time I saw this, I thought, uh-oh, this is impossible. But then I thought, this is actually the perfect case for machine learning, because some machine learning methods can detect small details in statistical data that I just can't come up with. If I was ever going to need a statistical method on steroids, this was the time. So, machine learning, or AI if you want to sell it, um, is actually pretty simple, and you only need two things. You need data and a reward function. The reward function tells the machine whether it's on the right track, and the data is all the machine knows about the world. The machine learns to be intelligent, by trying out different stuff on the data and going in the direction of the highest reward. Like, if I tell you a joke and you laugh, that's my reward, and I learn what kind of jokes you like. Easy peasy. A great thing about machine learning is that you always get an answer. A not so great thing is that you don't get an explanation along with the answer. That's why these things are sometimes called black boxes. Not because it's a secret what goes on inside or anything, but because you don't know which insight it represents. Like with the smoking mothers. Anyway, my team and I decided to go with machine learning to tell the particles apart, and it worked. Not, not spectacularly well, but it worked. There was only one problem. Which particle the machine thought it was looking at depended not only on the particle itself, but on how many of that kind of particle the machine had seen during training. Now, you might say, well, of course, everybody expects to see more of what they've seen much of before. But for us, this was a real problem, because remember, we haven't actually found these particles, so we have no way of knowing how many to expect of each. I discussed this with some of my friends who were data scientists, meaning they do these things not for particles, but for problems of the real world. And um, I got a lot of different answers. But to me, they were all some variation of, you choose. You choose not to think about this. You choose to go with whatever's in the data you got. Or you choose to adjust to some measure of fairness but you can't not choose, because you have to train on some data. In hindsight, it's easy for us to see that the Amazon recruiting AI was ridiculously disfavoring women, not because of faulty programming inside the AI itself, but because the discrimination was already there inside the data the AI was given to train on. So if anything, this AI taught us something about the world we live in, and did, in this case, not actively try to change. This insight was what did it for me. 
This was why I decided to move from particles to people, so to speak. Because I realized that data analysis, statistics on steroids and AI have the potential to affect and change society. And we need to think these things through very carefully. When we talk about using AI in society, two words keep coming up. Responsibility and explainability. Now, responsibility, the act of using AI responsibly, and explainability, the ability to explain the AI, those are two different things. And you can certainly have one without the other. Let's start with responsibility. We sometimes hear that the evolution of AI requires a new kind of ethics. Actually, the opposite is true. We need our old ethics more than ever. And you may have noticed a lot of AI ethics committees popping up. But what we need to do is to build our ethical principles into our AI systems. When companies build airplanes, they don't set up a don't fall down committee to keep airplanes from falling down before releasing them into the world. The not falling down is an integral part of airplanes. And we have to think about AI and ethics in the same way. Responsible AI is building ethics into AI. How many of you have one of these uh, clever watches? How many of you have ever written something on the internet? Very good. We humans are ridiculously easy to manipulate. And in our digital lives, we share our behaviors, opinions, interactions, and even biological processes. This does not take a malevolent super AI to exploit. Today's AI systems are more than capable of looking through our data and arriving at insights about us of which we ourselves weren't even aware. This can be used to greatly facilitate our lives, detecting cancer and filling up our fridges with whatever we may need. And it can be used for mass manipulation, affecting elections. And you know that feeling that you just can't stop scrolling? The tools for good and the tools for bad are the same. And furthermore, many a bad thing has happened unintentionally. If we don't understand the systems we use or the consequences of using them, we could be heading down a dangerous road without even realizing it. Which brings us to point two, the explainability. If you have an AI trained to solve some task, the cost of not checking for stuff you can't come up with is potentially enormous. You might think that, well, you just have to check for all the stuff you don't want to go wrong, and that should be easy. Turns out it's actually really difficult. For example, self-driving cars have image recognition systems which are very capable of identifying stop signs. However, it was discovered that such a system can be confused by some black and white boxes to think that it's actually looking at a please go ahead at 45 miles per hour sign. Now, that's quite a significant difference. You might say, well, that's just stupid misclassification. That's easy to fix. But that's not the point. The point is, would you have thought of checking for that? Now, I'm Norwegian, and here we're still working on the transition from sledges to self-driving cars. But once we get there, and keeping in mind all the things our science have to endure, how should we know everything to check self-driving cars for before releasing them onto our streets? When we build AI systems, can we check for everything in the universe? That's a rhetorical question, but the answer is no. The crux is that today's machine learning and AI systems think nothing like ourselves. We've tried to mimic the human brain, but we've not managed to mimic human thinking. For example, a three-year-old sees five cats and is able to understand what is a cat and not a dog. An image recognition system may need 100,000 images to learn the same thing. 
there are fundamental differences between the way we think and the way AI systems think, and we cannot expect to have an intuition for AI behavior. What we can do is make methods which explain to us what an AI based its decision upon, and for images, these are even quite intuitive. They highlight which part of the image went into a decision. But these methods are a bit like those ethics committees. They come in after the system is done and evaluated. If you think about what it feels like to look at a cat and know that it's a cat, there is some amount of, I've seen this kind of thing before. There's nothing strange about it. It has variations such as color and size, which are normal for cats. No part of it reminds me of a bus. It's a typical human thought process. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but this is kind of what we need to expect from our AI systems. Because if an AI looks at a picture and goes, Ooh, I think this is a panda, but I also think it's a school bus, it knows something's fishy. However, if we don't give our AIs a reason to evaluate themselves, they won't. Because remember that reward function I told you about? That's all the AI cares about. It cares about winning the reward function game in the easiest way possible. Actually, the dream scenario for an AI is a closed system, meaning rules which don't change, and no new elements that come in and surprise it, like board games. Alpha Zero, the chess AI which beat the world's best chess players, had trained only on playing games. That's what the zero stands for. Zero prior knowledge, only playing games. It figured out its own strategies, some of which the world's best players hadn't even thought about. And now these players find that they can actually learn something from the Alpha Zero playing style. So I love the way Kasparov put it. He said, the implications go far beyond my beloved chessboard. We can actually learn from the new knowledge these machines produce. Now, if we manage to look at AI and ethics in the same way, we could be onto something truly great. If we view ethics as a game, the game of the good life, AI could help us win this game in ways we hadn't even thought of. AI is really good at stuff we're bad at, and pretty bad at stuff we're good at. Now, we can view that as a weakness in AI, or we can view it as the perfect grounds for collaboration. I think one of those who put it best was brilliant physicist Stephen Hawking. He said that AI will become either the best or the worst thing ever to happen to humanity. AI could become a really valuable partner for us, and even teach us something about how the world works. Or it could completely mess up society. It's up to us how this works out. Thank you.